The field behind me, if you can see it here, is where Costco wants to put the plant. If they're going to have that chicken processing plant here, they're going to have a lot of work to do with public hearings at the city. And we're hearing from both sides, both perspectives from the community, city, and county this afternoon. Take a look. The four firefighters who were involved in the wreck, after suffering minor injuries, they got out of the fire truck and helped the driver of the truck that they T-boned and helped get him so he could be in shape to go to the hospital before they went to the hospital with minor injuries. At 120th and Center, where you can see the Black Lives Matter protest is active and alive behind me, but every single officer we spoke with today, even, we went, and even when we went on a ride along with a La Vista police officer, say that every officer in the nation had the same reaction when they found out that there were five officers shot and killed in Dallas last night. Volunteers here are excited that the GOP frontrunner is making a stop here. They haven't confirmed those details yet, although we have. But what they do know is that they're excited that Donald Trump is going to make a stop, but not everyone agrees. Yeah, probiotics and chia seeds are just some of the products helping you keep stay on track your diet for your New Year's resolution and just some of the hot things on the shelf to help you stay healthy this New Year's. It rained so hard and so much on Saturday morning four to eight inches of rain in a four hour period just on Saturday morning. So the standing water that you see behind me, that's affecting many farmers in this area. We also spoke to an emergency manager for this county and several others who talks about the damage to the city. For the Johnsons, every day they spend with their sons is a miracle, but the next few days are going to be even more special for the family. While the town of Logan has regular appearances of a small town, you can leave your door open most of the time Officer Jokum says Pico is going to be a big asset in helping keep this community safe. I would say, man, thank you. You you changed my life, honestly, because my life has changed from from that night. A lot of things have clicked in my head. I need to change myself. I need to better my life, you know. And, and I think that was a wake-up call for me. From his hospital bed, Guthrie is grateful to be alive and to have a new outlook on life. He says before the wreck, he was a negative person. Now, he says, he's a changed man. God definitely put his hand on me. That was a huge truck. And for me to actually survive it, that's, that's saying something. His road to recovery hasn't been easy. He can't remember the crash or the days following. He suffered a brain bleed and needed skin grafting after his ankle was broken. At first, he was worried about losing his leg. Now, he says doctors tell him he'll likely make a full recovery. Guthrie says even though Daniel Kulhoff was drunk when he was accused of the hit and run, he doesn't want to see the 53-year-old go back to jail. I hate seeing people go to jail because jail's not fun. It's a bad place. And uh, he's not, he made a mistake. He's never been in trouble before in his life, you know. I'm not angry with him, but I hope he, he understands that he needs to compensate for the mistake he has made. Santa's magic, but he can only do so much. He has the, the helps help him make the toys, and he has us help deliver them. One package at a time. Mail carriers delivered roughly three million packages across Nebraska and southwestern Iowa Thursday. People are pretty happy to see uh, kids get real excited. Parents are more relieved that packages show up when they wanted them. <laughs> With temperatures in the upper 30s and calm winds, longtime West Omaha letter carrier Mark Ratelli says he's had rougher days. We had someone a couple years ago mailed a, a weight set using our flat rate boxes, and that was awful. This man says he used to work in shipping and understands how hard a day like this can be. Oh, I appreciate those guys for what they do, and I'm actually waiting on some packages now, so <laughs> I hope they get here soon. Ritelli says he takes extra precautions to make sure people like Zachary Peck get their gifts this year. Said so We try to put packages out of plain sight from the street and encourage customers to go to USPS.com, and you can get uh, email and text alerts from when your packages get delivered. While a delivery day like today requires a lot of hard work, Ritelli says he enjoys his job during the holiday season. It feels good to make people happy. It doesn't matter if you're a big company mailing thousands of packages a day across the country or a grandma sending one package a year to her grandson. It's 
We take pride in getting it delivered on time. Mom, don't get there. You might not be able to understand this language, but it was spoken by 10,000 Umaha Indians in what is now Nebraska and parts of Iowa, Minnesota, Missouri, and South Dakota. Rufus White is one of less than 12 fluent speakers left, all older than 60. You talk to God and tell him, what kind of walk is That is like the only idea. What kind of yeah. yeah. White is one of several language teachers at the K-12 Umaha Nation School on the reservation, 70 miles north of Omaha. Our Indian world is getting smaller and smaller. Our native world, or we're taking on more of the Western world. Cultural teacher Oliver Sansosi says if the language goes away, they'll lose an essential piece of their culture. Now, language is what makes us who we are. Now, language belongs to Umaha. We're the ones who speak Umaha. Sansosi says it's hard to imagine life without fluent speakers. It's scary. It's disheartening. And to even, have to, even to think that, um, that our speakers are going to be gone, our languages will be gone, pushes me to want to learn it pushes me to say, to say, to tell myself that if this language is not saved in my generation, then it's my fault. Those who still speak the native language have been spending the last 18 years trying to translate it into dictionaries and workbooks, which are nearly ready to be published. Because of these works and recordings and things, this is how, why I can say to you, our language is not going to die. And so that had to be developed from scratch. Even though we had fluent speakers that worked here in the past, there was no um, concerted effort to document it and make it in a presentable way where it would be usable, usable in a school-like environment. The language is an option for the school's second language curriculum. While the language exists online and in books, Part of the challenge of teaching it is that kids don't often hear it fluently spoken. That's the biggest challenge. You need to be in an immersive environment in order for language to, 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 truly, uh, to truly revitalize in a quick way. Another challenge is getting kids interested in learning the culture. High school freshman Quentin Dick Jr. has been learning traditional drum, song, and dance since as long as he can remember. He hopes to pass on the culture like his grandfather Rufus White is doing now. Because one day our outer is going to be gone. I don't want to carry it. I don't want to be one of the ones saying, man, I wish I learned this when, I was, when they're still around. So I try to pick it up. It's, it's really important because a tree is not a tree without its roots. It's truly important to Nebraska because we're the first Nebraskans. Joe Kadath, KMTV Action 3 News.